Welcome back. Today, we're going to talk about the future of education, the future of marketing, and an interesting $500 book by Eugene Schwartz. In just a moment, we'll return to see how these two connect. Talk to you soon. Welcome to Assembly Unfiltered. I'm your host, Satchel, and co-founder of Assembly, the Learn to Earn platform. Assembly Unfiltered is a podcast about democracy, privacy, blockchain, politics, leadership, company culture, crypto, security, and startups. It's meant for anyone who believes that all of us are living in challenging, turbulent, and even exciting times. We're living in a moment ripe for dramatic change. We envision this as a podcast for our tribe, people who share an interest in how all these threads weave together for better communities. This is meant for our learners, voters, advertisers, civic organizations, tech geeks, developers, and employees. I hope you enjoy this episode of Assembly Unfiltered. All right, welcome back. So, um, I'm stitching together, um, you know, a conversation this time about education. And I know most of this podcast has really talked about a bunch of other things, typically politics, democracy, um, how ad networks and social media inf- uh, adversely affects politics, um, how to think about citizens. So it's really kind of been in the public policy arena. But if we're actually zooming back, I talked to somebody that I met through um, Y Combinator Startup School, and and and, and I, I start to get into a little deeper about the deeper motivation behind the inspiration for uh, Assembly, which is a learn-to-earn platform. And I wanted to pull back. I don't want to talk about the product, but I want to talk about my motivation and the zoomed-out trends. And it's really been my fascination with the nature and the importance of education broadly. Now, it ended up having a pretty good fit as one application for politics because I really do believe that an educated voter is a more engaged voter, and the more engaged voters we have, a better society we'll have. So that that seemed to be you know a pretty good fit. But really, education in general is something that's incredibly important. We've seen a lot of different innovation in the space, and I actually think there's going to be a tipping point. And so I want to start with that that premise because that's sort of the the living into the future concept. And if you look at sort of this trends, if, if you're listening to us on the podcast, you can click through to the blog. And I have a, uh, a diagram here and same with the, the YouTube. And it's generally showing how education is a a cost, a financial cost, and a heavy one, but that that cost has slowly been been decreasing over time. So I say, oh, if you go to a, a regular university like Yale, that's a huge chunk of change, you know, hundred thousand dollars or whatever. Uh, Coursera was an online course by those same universities, which in some cases can shrink dramatically the course, the the cost of learning some of that information. And then you have these platforms, which are more like commodity platforms, like Udemy, and so the cost like fifty dollars, a hundred dollars for taking, you know. A course. And then we see YouTube. And I would say that, you know, while uh, learning some development, while trying to figure out how to solve problems in Flutter or in Solidity, I go to YouTube and it's free. And some of those might be free that want me to go to a paid program for some improvements upon that experience. But I, I've gotten fairly far by just going on YouTube for free. And so that's an ad supported or an upsell supported education model. And there's there's quite a bit of like quality, useful education on YouTube. And so you could say, well, once you hit free, that's kind of it. And, and, and my guess, it's this is a huge leap, but it's that there's a financialization of everything where actually it'll be the reverse. That rather than it's being expensive and then cheaper and now free, you'll actually in some instances, in some use cases, be paid to learn. And that'll be this inflection point where there's actually an incentivization and a financialization of the learning process. So that sounds kind of 
wild. It sounds kind of crazy. You know, people are so used to paying for education. It's one of those markets that uh, even VCs, which was a surprise to me, are like really interested in terms of platforms for education or providing creators an opportunity to monetize their courses. Um, but but I think there's going to be some point in which there will coexist um, sort of incentivized learning. And so I'm going to pull back and say, well, why do I think this is the case? I'm going to talk about why this is the case, where the money's coming from, if we if we pull back, and why it's essential, and why it actually already, you know, if you think about it, already exists. So the first thing is, well, who's going to pay people to learn? And if we have the mindset that, well, education comes from public schools, so it's free, so it's the government, or it's from, you know, it, um, uh, institutions where you have to pay these professors or even sort of independent creators who need to get paid, then yeah, it's kind of a, a funky thing. But I actually believe that if marketing and advertising actually takes on the role of education and therefore they want to spend some of their money, including some money that will go to the learner in exchange for their time and understanding of what's being learned, then 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 that actually shows a, a flow of funds from those who ultimately want people who are learners to become consumers. Now, this sounds really dangerous if you're thinking about like teaching an edu- uh, a kindergartner and they're being inundated with ads. And I don't think that's a good idea. Although at the same time, I think it's already happening. So uh, I'd rather just be out in the open. I'm not advocating that K through 12 suddenly becomes, you know, they're paid to go to school and it's all paid for by ads, you know, by Amazon or whatever. I'm not certainly not arguing for that case. But I do believe that if we pull back and look at, well, what are the needs of marketers and what is going to create a better experience for learners? I think there's going to be some conflation. And the thing that allows us to actually do that, surprisingly, is crypto. So crypto is is um, socializing the notion of financially fina- financializing all kinds of behavior. And proof of work has traditionally been seen as a computer doing the work. But if we can find ways to demonstrate somebody spent the time to learn, somebody took a quiz to under- demonstrate understanding, that is a form of proof that someone understands something and there is some value to that. And so I think crypto is starting to like evolve in the way that it's capturing, monetizing value in a way that's trustworthy and visible and immutable and fungible. And I think that one of those ways is going to be education because there's clearly value in it. People value paying for education. But I think also, let's take a look at the other side where marketers value the educational experience for acquiring customers. So I'm going to use some um, examples of that to like illustrate that. And then I'm going to pull back out to say why that's going to be the case moving forward into the future. So super bad model where it's educational, but it involves some of these same elements I'm talking about are incentivized education where you're in a room and you're, you know, rewarded with some like, like a hotel or a cruise to learn about something with the hopes that some percentage of those people will end up paying for something with a super high margin that's expensive. Does that sound like something you're familiar with? And if you've ever like walked by one of those timeshares presentations or heaven forbid you actually participated in that, um, that's basically what it is. It's a high pressure education, right? But it has this incentive. They always start with the incentive. At the end of watching this webinar or attending this webinar, you'll get this cruise or a dinner or a hotel stay. I mean, the incentive is part of it and they want this education model of a webinar, which is really marking. Now it's Granted, it's a bad experience, but it clearly works. But it is clearly a very, very, very bad experience. Nobody likes them. Nobody can stand those timeshares marketing pitches. But there's something that we can extract from something sleazy and ugly that might be actually, if you exchange the UX, is probably more palatable. Now, let's let's take another way to like step into this about how things can change and look at an education model, which really is a form of marketing, but it was a form of marketing where the customer pays to be marketed to. And it's under the guise of education. And that is certification, which is what the high-tech market has done and other 
I think industries probably do. I don't, I'm not that familiar with it, but whether it's Cisco or Amazon or pretty much any company, they have these certifications and you have to pay and you get this training, you get this cert, 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 certificate and you can kind of like go and use this. Now, th- there is some that will argue that say, oh no, but this is true education. But honestly, really, Cisco starts these early. They start them in universities because once people are used to and understand um, a particular technology, there's some uh, bias that occurs when you've spent the time to learn about something, to use it, where you're like, you know what? I've already spent the time with Cisco or Microsoft that I'm going to use that moving forward. And I think that that has been a very effective form of marketing where it's paid for by the customer. Well, at some point, you know, the gig is up and they just got to just say, hey, look, we, we need more people to go through our certifications and we'll incentivize you. But we need to know that you actually understood the material since we're, we're, we're doing this. We need some way to put you on the hook. So to me, if you look at it and like, well, you know, that that doesn't seem unreasonable, right? If we look back at general education about how things eventually trend into free, I don't see why certifications, which are marketed as a form of education, wouldn't at some point become free because it really is marketing. But at the end of the day, marketing for it to be effective. And as someone told me, as a business, paid marketing shows you're a grown up business. Like eventually they have to pay for it to get the adequate distribution and the incentives for participation and eyeballs. So to me, it's, it's, it's a leap into the future. I don't know for sure if it's true, but it seems to believe that there are some elements to that. Now I want to pull back and talk about marketing theory, about why this is almost actually essential. And it starts with this $500 book by Eugene Schwartz. Now, I didn't buy it and I don't have it, but someone gave me a Xerox copy of it a long time ago, scanned copy of it. I don't think I have it anymore. But I remember looking at it and one of the key takeaways, which you can Google and you can look at it, it's, it's sort of now become common knowledge, but at the time I got it, like, you know, five years ago, it wasn't, is the sophistication of markets. And the basic premise is as markets become more sophisticated, simple awareness or simple, this is a better version of X simply doesn't work. Like people can now Google information, they can hear from um, other people, but like it, it just isn't enough to just have awareness or Instagram photos as things become more mature. They actually need to change their belief. So really solid brands find some other way to tap into the underlying belief systems for customers. And I think that that is really going to continue moving forward. But Product features need a deeper connection to beliefs. And one of the ways to construct beliefs is for people to go through literally an education process to understand the belief. And it's not about this is what the feature does. It's usually about education about the nature of the problem, why the problem is more is deeper or more complicated, and why it needs certain capabilities. It's sort of the same element but more sophisticated than what I was talking about in the political context. Right, A lot of political advertising is around big awareness, name repetition. You'll hear that from consultants that it's all about the name rep- repetition. And I, and I believe that that's certainly true to some, to some extent. But um, within sort of like consumer marketing and other things, you'll, you'll hear people say the same thing. It's name recognition. It's brand. But deeper down, it's really going to be about what is the belief. When I've talked to some marketers that are really like trying to get into very, very competitive markets, such as financial products and health products, it's actually education-based marketing. They have to be able to educate the customer around unique elements about the solution which are based on a deeper understanding about the problem. And this is a different kind of marketing versus just, hi, we're better. Um, hi, they're worse. And and I think that we're going to see that uh, infiltrate everywhere. And in fact, we, we use it here. Like I don't really spend as much time talking about the product. It's talking about the nature of the problem of education, of, of marketing, whether it's in politics or it's in financial or, or um, tech. And so I really believe that the nature of marketing needs to move up the sophistication stream. And as it gets there, it's going to be education. Once education is acknowledged as this is the means in which we're going to actually be able to persuade people more deeply, then marketers get in. And as soon as marketers get in, there is going to be some flow of funds. Once there's some flow of funds, the enablement 
through crypto and Web3 allows us to invert the uh, payer payee uh, relationship so that people who actually learn to the point where they can become a consumer, perhaps not right away, which is the nature of this kind of marketing. It's often not right away, but it could be. It could be. Um, they'll get paid to reward it to actually learn it. And so the intersection starts to become, you know, solving a different problem, which is, you know, how do you reach people? Well, as you incentivize people, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll want to come, but, uh, and, and that's not an easy problem to solve. And then gaming. And so making sure that they don't get gamed, they don't game it. And so they just become useless leads or wasted money. And so I think that's, that's, that's always going to be a problem. And it's one that we've got some interesting ideas to solve on the back end. But I think the core idea from this is thinking about what's the nature of education and, and what does it look like in the future? So, you know, I, I've been imagining it as, well, it's a mobile app. And it, can education be rather than sitting in a classroom, sitting from your computer, watching a video, can we start to strip things down into very bite-sized chunks that are, like, entertaining even, such that if you have some free time, and you're like, you know what? I might be able to earn a couple more points, and I'm really close to getting a gift card at, you know, name your brand. Um, I, and I kind of want to skim through here, and you've already inputted your areas of interest. Um, and then you go ahead and you take this course, and you kind of learn something. And within that segment, those courses are created by and subsidized by advertisers because their take is a better educated person who understands the problem that they're trying to solve might see them as the solution. And you can start to think about that in a number of categories. You know, so there's a saying that insurance is something that you need that needs to be sold. It's not bought. And I think a lot of things are starting to get into that, you know, into that field. So with something like insurance, it, it, it probably is an, an education process. And typically it's been you talk to an insurance agent, which nobody wants to do. So then we saw this rise of like blogs, which monetized and became lead gen. And they're trying to explain insurance. And so I think that there was some appetite for, well, you know, I need to learn about it. I'm going to go to this blog who's a financial blogger. And, you know, they're going to tell me about insurance and what I think. And I kind of trust them. But they're basically marketing too, right? Because they have, they're generating leads and they're getting paid for that. So what if instead of the blogger making the money and you're spending on it, you're like, well, look, I'm going to earn something because I'm going to spend some time and I'm going to read this article. And I understand that up front, it is being created by the purveyor. It's being created by the vendor. And once you know that, that, that clarity, I think, is actually very important. You don't necessarily get that when you go to a blog site where they might be reviewing products. And it's they, they, they have some disclosure, I think, is required by law to do that. But it, it, it feels like, yeah, they're selling to me, but they aren't actually explicitly saying this is an ad. Uh, I'm like, let's just say it is an ad. We are trying to provide education. There's going to be, you know, visibility and disclosure so that if there's something funky going on, any government agency that isn't is responsible for like consumer protections can be easily scanning it. Competitors can scan it and offer their counterpoint in a marketplace of ideas. I think that that's always a great way to do things. So if we do this, I really think that that is a model for us to think about what's happening with certain types of education in the market. Again, I don't think that's going to be like how to read and your student uh, through, you know, in kindergarten and it's going to be paid for by, you know, Amazon. I, I, just, I think that would be a dystopian, you know, future. But I think there are things where it's actually better to be like, look, the education is going to come. There's going to be some guidelines. If they're lying in their education, then hopefully it's so transparent other people are able to call them on it and they will suffer for it. So you let the free market of ideas kind of like prevent that from happening. And um, as I said, there's some back end things to prevent gaming on both sides of it. But but the purpose of this is to lay out the land of like, you know, education kind of is is kind of getting into this weird funky mix where it really is a form of 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 marketing in certain areas. And I'd rather be open transparent. You have uh, uh, forces that try to keep things in check because of its openness so that there isn't somebody who's lying or saying something that's untrue. And I think that that is, there's a lot of assumptions in it. But if I were to look into the future, I, I don't feel like it's completely uh, 
unrealistic that that is something that's actually going to occur, particularly in certain、uh, target markets. So I wanted to kind of like pull this story out and talk about the role of education and look at this image and just ask yourself, you know, if things are moving more and more to free, where can it go from there? And I would say, yeah, you couldn't really get any further than free. You can just adjust the free line, which means you offer more and more and more stuff for free. And and I think that is what's sort of happening. The problem is you offer more and more stuff for free, then you start to get unclear on the quality. More stuff can be done for free. I go onto YouTube and I see a lot of free courses on you know programming, but man, the quality does vary quite a lot. However, if somebody is paying, you know that the quality is probably going to go up because they need it to be effective, and I, I think that there's some turning point that will occur with regards to how we learn in this market in a way that captures our intent, our, our in- attention and engagement. Now, remember the alternative of learning about something, even if it's something that's You ultimately you need to buy or make a a, a a purchase. I think it's better than just pure entertainment, which is distracting and head breaking. And there's a lot of stuff that's just out there for for clicks. And I don't think that's actually really good. A lot of the clickbaity stuff. And if you look on TikTok or YouTube, some of the stuff is not educational at all. It simply is out to get attention and doesn't really do anything at all. And they're monetizing it based on. You know ads, so why don't you just get rid of the ads and just make the and get rid of the janky content and make the content educational and then lay it out. Hey, this is an ad. So food for thoughts. I'm going to continue to elaborate on this and would love your your feedback on it as I you know convert it maybe into another session or an essay. But think about it. Check out the picture if you're listening on this podcast. The notes, the link to the blog will be in the notes, and you can kind of see this illustration where the costs continue to go down to free, and then convert up where you're actually earning to learn. All right, take care, friends. See you next time.